Welcome to Happily Ever Aftermath, the podcast where we discuss relationships in movies and our relationships with them. I'm Plea Grinfield. And I'm Diana Rojek Sconner. Hello, Diana. Polina. One, thank you for choosing a movie that was 85 minutes long. This is a, sh- I think we're talking about this may be a shortest movie. Two, you got some splaining to do. Oh, I do. <laughs> just, I sort of, I don't know. Mistakes did you, were made. Did you did you accidentally write down the House of Yes, and it turns out you wanted the House of Usher? Uh, n- well, but not falling. There's no falling. <laughs> no, well, independent movie. Yeah, rom com. You know nothing about. Um, His name is James Usher, <laughs> and he has a cattle ranch. <laughs> <laughs> She's from the big city. <laughs> What's going to happen? Her name is Gwendolyn Fall. <laughs> I like this movie. Well, thank you very much. I'll really enjoy that. But we're not talking about no, this fictional. No, no, Instead, no. Instead, we are talking about... The House of Yes. The House uh, of Yes. The House of Yes. 1997. Uh, 1997. Important context. Yes, actually. Uh, so, a man, played by Josh Hamilton, mm-hmm. and his fiance, played by Tori Spelling, mm-hmm. Uh, visit his warped clan, complete with dark mansion and incestuous twin sister Parker Posey. Yep, that's what happened. I mean, in this I movie. mean, it's her name isn't Parker Posey in the movie. Her name is Jackie O, mm-hmm. but she is played by Parker Posey, and this is like everybody's. This is kind of her. Like, I guess everyone's like, this is kind of the perfect, you know, Parker Posey role. I read that. Um, and is this something that solidified her? Because Parker, Parker Posey was the it girl for indie movies. Yes. I wanted to say. And I guess this is, I mean, this is to me a, an indie movie. Um, no, I think she was, I mean, I should probably look. I mean, I don't know. I... I felt like this is an indie movie made with big, or I don't know how big Freddie Prince Jr. was at the time. I think mm. probably pretty big. I'm thinking this was pre, I know what you did last summer, and pre She's All That. Has to be pre She's All That because Rachel Lee Cook is in this movie mm-hmm. as young yes. Jackie O. Right. And I'm like, wow, she's like 12, and he's very tall and older, but mm-hmm. I don't know what their actual age differences are. But no, I think this is before Freddie Prince Jr. hit it big. Why don't you go through the full cast? Of, yeah, of like yeah. exactly six people, right? And then um, so we have, so we be, so we have uh, Marty played by Josh Hamilton, mm-hmm. um, and no, 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 Hamilton. Yeah, <laughs> and he brings uh, he brings his fiance Leslie to meet the family for Thanksgiving, and Leslie is played by Tori Spelling. Mm-hmm. So. In that family, there are, uh, he has a sister who they, and she plays Jackie uh, Pascal. I'm going to assume it's Pascal. Parker Posey. Yes. Parker Posey Mm -hmm. plays her um, as an adult. And then as a teenager, she is played by Rachel Lee Cook. Mm -hmm. They have a young, so they're twins. Jackie O and Marty are twins. Mm -hmm. They have a younger sibling called Anthony, played by Freddie Prince Jr. Mm -hmm. Their mother is also in attendance. Their father has died. Uh, She is played... What? Has he? I don't know. Um, Ambiguous. I don't know. It seems pretty clear. Well, I mean, unreliable narrator. Right. Okay, Genevieve Bougeau um, uh, plays the mom, and you never really quite get her first name. A dysfunctional family. I saw this movie in the theater. Since then, I've actually seen it uh, once or twice with friends. I saw it with, I feel like, okay, my dad is super into this movie. Oh, my hand is raised. And uh, I'm not super into it, but he's like, he loved it. So I think I may have actually seen it with him. Okay. Because he likes really dark, twisted comedies. Okay. Any others as examples? Um... Uh, he loves Secretary. Huh. Oh, God. Now I'm really thinking about it. Um, he really like. Okay. His There's this show called Jam, and it was in the UK in, like, the middle of the night mm-hmm. for, like, one year. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was, this is possibly the weirdest show I've ever seen. It's so dark. And it's, it's I can't even get it in the U.S., 
Um, well, we have Black Mirror now, so. It's like Black Mirror, but like darker. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was so really... dark Black Mirror? Very, yeah, like pitch Black Mirror. Pitch Black Mirror. Well, I wouldn't say, yeah, it's about at least as dark, if not much darker. Um, so he just, yeah, he like, I don't know. Uh, so I think I saw this like on video with my dad. He definitely ha- my dad collects VHS. I think I've mentioned this. My dad collects tapes. And he, he had this movie. So yes, no in the theater? or saw Oh, definitely yes in the theater. Yes I saw it theater. actually with Sean. Oh, okay. And with, yeah. And I, you know, this was like a movie a lot of my friends saw. Okay. Like, I'm a huge Parker Posey, or I was mm-hmm. a huge Parker Posey fan. Any other Parker Posey movies that you I mean, I love note? all the, um, like, Waiting for Guffman and, oh. and, like, all those. Those are some of my, I love all of those movies. I love, I'm trying to think of other Parker Posey movies, but she just, like, this sort of. I watched Clock Watchers. Clock Watchers? Mm-hmm. Yeah. God, I barely... Jesus, didn't even see that. Anyway, I think it's just also, like, the... Uh, like, she's oh. one of those few people I actually, like, kind of followed or was interested in. Like, she... You know, I definitely wanted to be Parker Posey when I was... Not in this movie, obviously, but, like, I... I think I know what happened. Kate Beckinsale came along, and then we didn't meet Parker Posey anymore. I feel like Kate Beckinsale and Parker Posey are not the same person. Oh, of course not. But but for me, um, if you have... I bet you if, if Parker Posey was in the movie The Last Days of Disco, it would feel exactly the same to me. Really? Yes. How? Because their hairs are similar. And they're both like indie, wafy people. See, I just guess I don't see Kate Beckinsale as that kind of indie. No, I know. Because she had like an entire franchise. Yeah, I guess like... But I'm don't talking know. about like 2001 when I was watching the movie The Last Days of Disco. Yeah. And you felt it, that way. Yeah, I just feel and like... I was also confused by that movie. I don't even remember watching it. I think both, anyway. I think I was confused by both of these movies around the same time. Uh, this is a very confusing movie. Um, so I watched... Oh, oh I watched it again, and it's also still very confusing. So, so what about you? When did you see this movie? Okay, so I'm not going to claim that I saw it when it came out, but I'm willing to wager that it was on my radar because I remember the poster, not the poster poster, but like the art box cover. Yes. When walking through the various rental places where you still right. could. So the whole looking over her shoulder in the Jackie O pink Chanel, Chanel suit. suit yeah. yeah. And I remember watching it in maybe my late teens, early 20s mm-hmm. and going, huh. Okay. I guess, yeah. So I saw it in my late, my mid to late 20s, my mid 20s, I guess. Okay. 97. Whereas when I read the synopsis and it said it's a black comedy for the podcast rewatch i'm like oh i bet you won't get it now and i watched it again no so well the, what do you say get i always think like what's get okay so there is something about this that is I'm not i'm not gonna say worthy but had enough attention to be a play and then become a movie so clearly it had enough of a following or enough of a backing for this to happen. And so there has to be some sort of backing to it to where people are watching it. People are like, oh, Parker Posey or, oh, this movie, it has like some clout behind it, be it like it's mm-hmm. stage run or something to that effect that would get mm-hmm. the momentum for a movie to be made. So I remember watching this thing. There's like, so many movies that like don't make sense according to that formula. <laughs> Don't, that don't make sense yeah like i'm like this was terrible like how did this kind of the, the how did this get made question like who thought this was a good idea well i mean i don't know if i people, feel that way about pe- this movie people with but money I'm really but, mixed yeah. yeah uh that's a completely different podcast plan it, it is a completely different <laughs> podcast an excellent podcast that you introduced me to i love very much so but what i was thinking at is that when i was reading like oh this is one of those things where it's probably too high art for me to get Mm. after the first time I watched it I'm just like oh I guess I guess I just don't get it Mm. because it's out and people apparently like it enough to where the play was made into a movie so they wanted to get it out there Mm. and then when I watched it again I'm like oh there have been some times where I've been blindsided by black comedies and it's just like oh this is just it's like nice to know like that's your reaction is supposed to be like it's yeah yeah well no when a trailer leads you astray 
and you're not bracing yourself accordingly, you get so angry. Or, okay, sorry, I get so angry. Mm. And so watching this movie, knowing full well that there's incest involved and it's supposed to be black comedy, I was thinking, okay, now let's find the humor. Okay, she's got some great lines. But overall, I want to I want to punch her in the face. Mm-hmm. And that was which that is the, kind of what you're supposed to was feel. Was that the point? Yes. Okay, that was the point. You're supposed to want to punch her in the face. I guess I just didn't make it over the hump of just like I want to punch her in the face. This is great. I mean, okay. So when I saw so one when I saw this movie, I actually I wanted to punch everybody in the face. In this well, movie. yeah, and I think actually that's also what you're supposed to do. So, but then again, like in a but the reason I asked you this question is okay. not to be like, oh, you get it, but because I feel like. No, no, you got to say it like this. Oh, you didn't get it. Yeah. <laughs> um, is like, there's kind um, I guess like, I, I don't know. I, I think that, so I actually like knowing as little about a movie before I'm about to see it oh, as okay. possible. That works in certain instances, yes. Yeah, and just because you don't go in with preconceived notions it is helpful. I do. I actually agree with you that there's something about like knowing that something's going to be a black comedy that is like it's helpful. It's helpful. I feel like that is the one designation where I'm like, yeah. Well, I think the whether or not a movie contains incest checkbox is important to know. So I'm gonna keep saying that until no. And and so okay. So um, I saw this movie. I was so and I probably like you know as I said I also talked you know, a lot of my friends saw it, so we talked about it a lot. Um, I was really familiar with the play. I'd actually read the play. Wow. For um, some reason. I don't Um, know. Well, I mean, I read, I mean, other than just, like, I came across it. I thought it was, you know, I heard she was good. Uh, The author? uh, Yeah. The playwright? The playwright. Mm -hmm. Um, And... uh, whose name I, we will put in the credits. Wendy McLeod. Thank you. Um, yes, I did. I knew about her and because uh, this was still, I mean, I was still almost kind of, I mean, it wasn't too far out from like actually making a decision that I wasn't going to work in theater. Um, so I was still like, you wait, know. wait, this, this shooed you away from theater? No, no, no. The Lots of you. other things. Oh. It had nothing to do. With, I'm just saying like I read the play. I thought the play was kind of crazy and hysterical and mm. wacky so um but the reason it kind of stayed so it stayed with me and I actually had a my um for some reason it was just I don't know I mean Shauna I really enjoyed it I talked to all about it with my dad I was really into these kind of movies at the time too not the incest part no no I was gonna but say the, like, like like what else super dark kind of mm-hmm. the kind of super dark dark sort of skewering um you know people in society that are considered uh you know above reproach I grew up in you know a sort of a I mean mean, not the whole time I grew up but like a lot of some of my life was spent in like places where uh it was just like it was kind of a preppy rich community Mm -hmm. and is this your time in New Jersey? This is like Princeton, okay. which isn't even that. And then I knew, you know, knowing people, um, you know, I went to school in Massachusetts for some of the time and I knew, you know, we'd go and visit people's houses and well, this there's is- just this whole idea. I mean, this, and this, obviously this, uh, they, they live across. So the important thing is they live across from the Kennedys. I, and you know me, I love, like, I do love comedies about, the way people interact and I love comedy I do I'm kind of a you know my favorite like I was joking my favorite literary genre is really the unreliable narrator genre like Mm -hmm. I love I love like it's kind of social you know I mean Jane Austen's fun is she unreliable no 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 you're right I made a transition but uh sorry so unreliable narrator but I also really like uh wait Mr. Darcy did Mr. Darcy didn't have 10,000 a year he did not damn it I know he just thought he would 18,000 that's the thing it's 19.23 no one talks about that so inflation very mad okay um well just you know bad stock market Haha, there was no stock market. That's a joke, sorry. Um, anyway, um, <laughs> but um, uh, that happens later. Uh, so essentially, I really liked, so I knew about the play, and I think also, and that's important for the following reason. So 
the reason I mentioned Jane Austen is because I also really like kind of social, like especially upper class social skewering things. Okay. And uh, and then also people shifting like classes is like really interesting. I love like Age of Innocence. I love, mm. I know I mentioned the group. I love, uh, you know, Austin's good. Mm-hmm. Um, Hunger, in fact, Hunger Games, yeah. Hunger Games is actually, I, re- I really enjoy it as well. Okay. But anyway, so I like this thing. And the thing about the play, and this is kind of the, uh, sort of important, is the, is that it's, um, it descri- the subtitle of the play is a Jacobean drama. Say, which, that, say that again. Jacobean. What is it? Okay. So that's actually like that's a, a time period literary t- like Shakespeare was was part of it. Um, but it's sort of like when uh, it's essentially uh, I mean, there's 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 also there's um, essentially it's a period like people started kind of I, and I think what she's referring to is sort of like instead of being just polite, mm-hmm. uh, theater started to get again. Uh, really, this is like in, mostly in, in uh, England. This refers to. Uh, so wait, that's this is when people stop being polite and start getting rich. Kind of, and so they talked Damn. about like kings and queens, sort of being or like people, like, sort of upper classes um, or kind of ruling classes. Uh, you know, people like there's there's just a lot. There was more blood. There was more sort of sex. There was more. Are we passion about, there was more foibles in these people are we talking about in the arts yes like in okay. play playwriting specifically okay that makes more so sense. when she's referring to that it's like there's and there's also there's suppose you know this and and using that i think i mean this is my analysis there's lots of like i'm sure there's people who have studied this more recently than i have Oddly, but like i couldn't find any pieces about the house of yes i'm just like all right now this is where i go online and find someone who's written something about this to you know kind of dive more into it nothing, mm-hmm. nothing. oh interesting i found uh, i found actually like you know it, it got really mixed reviews it's it about a 61 and i totally get why and actually so when i saw it so the reason i chose it and the reason i've been thinking about it mm-hmm. is um so i'm kind of being circular but the re so when i first saw it they was in that spirit I knew that it was going to be this like skewering of social mores of uh, there was it was going to be kind of ridiculous and over the top. OK. Like I was expecting all that. Um, I knew it was going to have, uh, you know, it was, I knew it was going to be a bit subversive. I was kind of I was there for it. Um, now. The other part, though, though, I really do remember this movie very differently. So I have to admit, I chose it because I was kind of, I've been thinking, for some reason, it had been coming up, like, in my head a little bit. Okay. And the thing is, I really remember the relationship between Leslie and Marty mm-hmm. kind of differently than it took place here. And there's one, there's a couple scenes um, and it's always a surprise to, you know, rewatch a movie that you haven't watched in. I mean, this is over 20 years ago. Okay. Um, I've not seen it in 20 years of my life. And like, I've seen lots of movies and it's kind of, you know, but the parts that I remember is basically him. Um, it's basically her kind of fighting. The thing I remember happening a lot more was her fighting for her relationship. This is Leslie fighting. Leslie, I'm sorry. Leslie fighting, for, fighting her re- for her relationship with Marty. Marty. And the one, the piece that she does is, um, the piece that she sort of uh, does is like, she talks about their Sundays. Yes. She does go off on a while. Uh, and i that's like one of those scenes that I think about a lot. And in fact, it was sort of wanting this kind of Sunday that, was that my made next me remember this movie. And I... I Do you have these Sundays or you I do want- not. Mm. I've never... I don't... I'm like... It's kind... Like to me, this is an ideal 
kind of thing that I am not actually like probably don't actually want but I'm not really capable of kind of having like I don't have the like lack of anxiety and kind of uh I I don't know just like uh to do it but also around this time Sean and I actually I think right before this or actually no you know what I lied because now that I think about it, these are actually the exact Sundays that Sean and I used to have. Not exactly. Well, of course not. But number one, alarm did not go off. That's a great Sunday. Right, right. But like, so we, because we worked in a bar together when we met. Mm-hmm. And we both worked the same shift. So it's like Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Mm-hmm. And making Sunday effectively your Saturday. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But you are so ex- like it was we worked nine hour shifts in a bar it was a crazy busy bar at the time mm-hmm. um we were actually more than nine because you kind of got off like you had to clean and stuff so we're so tired that on thursday on sundays we just kind of go to the same place do the same things we didn't we didn't really hang out with other people because we're so sick of people okay you know and um like that stands for it was just, a just customer service yeah yeah job. especially you're dealing with drunks and it's oh. physically extremely exhausting we had stairs we had um so there, there was something about the first of all it was very bright when she was talking about their son i know the light is so different it, it absolutely is and this whole thing of like they're just sitting kind of like you know in the bath together and it's very Mm -hmm. innocent it's Mm -hmm. like they're sort of soaping each other's backs and they but it's like they always make it look better than the reality oh yeah yeah i know ow my foot ow my foot. right 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 i'm like it has to be a very large tub but (laughs) clearly it's not yeah well also to film people in tubs is what right right no no yeah i've like i think yeah i think the like yeah it never really works and then somebody is like it's too hot yeah, it's never as nice. This, so the sequel would be The Tub of Lies. Right, right. <laughs> um, and so anyway, so to me, what I remember is, and I think, you know, now that I think about it, I mean, when I was thinking about what, what it was, is at this time, I both, you know, my husband, oh, I think my, no, my husband's still, or he wasn't my husband at the time, but Sean and I were together and we worked uh, I st- I started like working a nine to five job mm-hmm. around ninety seven. What a ma- way to make a living! What a way, and which is good. Like I wanted a career, mm-hmm. but like it just you know it's just that kind of it's just different. You I know, think, it's a yeah. different sort of thing because like the one nice thing about working in a bar, which I really enjoyed. I want to say one, I was lucky, I worked in a good place. I didn't have to work too many terrible shifts. Um, it was very popular. A lot of my friends went there. It was great. But, um, you know, is once it's over, it's over. It's incredibly stressful. But an office job, you think about, you wake up in the middle of the night going, I should have done this. I should have done that. You can't redo, you know, a thing at work. Like you can't redo a table. Allow my anxious brain to contradict you. I, oh, oh no, I think about all the mistakes I made in customer service all the time right but like it's just you kind of can't it's not like you don't have to solve it you know I mean you think about it but I don't know it's just like I guess after a while I didn't really think about it it was just like a thing I did and it was hard and then I like stopped anyway so re-watching it was a very different experience yeah yeah of course um I, I had my own version of rewatching it and yeah I'm still shaking or you know just shrugging my shoulders First, first question, yeah. very important question, because right. it, it's based on a play, so I kind of get this. But mm-hmm. why does no one close a door in this movie? You mean they just leave them open? Yeah, bedroom doors. Hey, I just walked in on. I <laughs> well, and I think that well, because it. I mean, I feel like because it adds to that's like that sense of it's not of a, discomfort. Well, I mean, I think it's logistics, have, have right? Considered- because you can't like. Yes, I agree. There's like. She's in a, Leslie is in a bedroom and yeah. everything is just like, hi, it's Anthony. Okay. Close the door. And then, you know, Anthony is still there. Mother comes in. Hi, still close the door. 
go right away. close the door right you're done i mean i guess i presume that they did close the door but just they can't lock it no no there was it was wide open the whole time that or there were no doors now you have to watch it again i did my well that was a, that was actually so after like thinking about so last night when i watched it, i was like <gasps> i was like god i was like I, one i forgot I mean, I knew there was incense, like, I'm gonna, but I kind of forgot how creepy and uncomfortable the incest was, and it was like, when you say, like, oh, it's nice to know it is a black comedy, because, I I mean, first off, I'm writing that quote for social media, I found it hysterically, I did find it hysterically funny, Mm. like, I do think, like, the whole, like, the, the dialogue, and the, uh, you know, just this idea, like, like watching the Kennedys, you know, and uh, I don't know. I just found it really, fu- I mean, I found it funny. Um, but, like, I, first off, I kept thinking, like, what have I done to you? Like, I was like, why am I making her watch this? I found the incest stuff, like, so much creepier. Mm. And, and in fact, I kind of wish I could rewatch the movie. I mean, you still can. I mean, I can, but, like, for this, I... I wish I had go back. G- given myself enough time. Check the doors. Right. To go back, close the doors. There were no doors. I'm I'm like wondering, because like, I don't know, when I'm at a strange house, like to me, it's very important to be able to close a door. Of course. That's why. Was, was she waiting for him? That's what it, I thought maybe it was that she was waiting for him to come in. That doesn't explain the beginning, because then she'd be waiting for him the whole time. And it was her, her guest, it was the guest room. Mm-hmm. Anyways, no doors. Anyway, yeah, um, and, but, like, and there's just this, like, that whole, it, I don't know, so that was, like, very difficult for me, and then the whole, like, insane, you know, they, and they kind of did talk about it, like, please don't call her insane, mm-hmm. she's mm-hmm. got, you know, she's mentally ill, or you said she's, he's sick, okay. and she's, like, so that, like, definitely felt a little dated. Like, the way they treated her mental illness was sort of a little more like a joke. Well, here's here's a side question for yeah. you, then. All right, so there is an implication. So Marty believes that their father left. Right. And you never know if, like, yeah, but she believes he got shot. She said, no, mom shot him. Right. And he's buried in the backyard. Yeah. And there was a big hole in the backyard. He's like, no, that was because of the air conditioning right. or something was being installed. It was like a generator maybe. Yeah. And I'm just thinking perfect place to put him because you're going to put right. the thing down. Boom. He's gone. Yeah. And and the mom is like a bit like she's. There were a few. I, I will she's say. Very, a, she's a very odd character who is clearly very distant from her, you know, from like human emotions. The absolute in stereotypical cold I have done my duty as a mother, as in I have yeah, I have given birthed you, I have and birthed, I have given you objects. Well, not even I've given you objects. It's like I have given my husband his heirs, so therefore, right? Yeah, I, and in fact, she we're not really sure I've been reading whose they are. Well, well, it's in well, Anthony says like no, my my dad's not their dad. I believe he says that to Leslie. Yeah, yeah, and she says, oh, I didn't realize he was my great love. The mother says, I didn't realize he was my great love for the husband. Uh, until he was gone, I my great love was whoever I met at a party. And mm. then, like, and then they kind of, like, they keep mentioning she's, well, a free spirit, you know? She definitely is, like, I don't know. Like, it just gets mentioned a lot. Right, and I'm wondering, okay, so what I was getting at earlier mm-hmm. was, now, is there actual mental illness or is there just some deep trauma that was just unchecked and that's what made Jackie... Do you think that the father died or... Well, well... Oh, do do I think the father is gone or I don't think anyone with that kind of money would leave and not have like some like other type of paper trail. No, okay. This is important for this movie. This is nineteen eighty three. So it's not like taking place in ninety seven where it's like the beginning of the internet and like people mm-hmm. can find it. So this is Thanksgiving nineteen eighty three. Hey, people could put this down as a great Thanksgiving movie to watch mm-hmm. with their family. Yeah. Ooh, what would be more uncomfortable? Mm-hmm. This or love? They never actually end up eating. Uh, well, no, the power goes out. Yeah, you think that's the father rolling over in his grave when? The... <laughs> yeah. Uh, Thanksgiving, my ass. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, it does. You're right. It doesn't make a lot of sense. So, why is it 1983? 
why is it 1983? Like, why? I forgot that it was 1983. It's Thanksgiving 1983. It was at oh, the it was bottom. like at the f- first bit. Yeah, I think it was covered. I was having tr- like my cop was having. I was having a lot of trouble. Like that first scene, um, the music was so loud in my copy oh. that I couldn't really understand what she was saying. And oh, so I ended when, up when she was the, doing the, the yeah, the, like oh. the first. Well, that was I believe. No, well, I don't think then was when the. Kennedy assassinated. They, they they talk about the day Kennedy was assassinated, right? A lot, and I wasn't it like their father left like that's that week, right? Hmm. So and I get the black, but comic. like that doesn't actually make sense because they wouldn't have if they remembered their father leaving, leaving, it would not be the day Kennedy got assassinated, right? Because they would be. If they were, if this is 1983 and they're like 27 or 28, Not older is than what that, they yeah. said. Yeah, something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, if you're, eight, you would be six, seven, six. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, it could happen. I guess you're right. It is 1983. Well, that I I'm perfectly yeah. clear. Yeah, but on. they're kind of talking about like the. Yeah, anyway, so, no, I'm just, like, trying to do the math. Okay, so, I always think, so, they're, I think they're referring to two things. They're referring to the day the father died. They're referring to this party. Yes. And they're referring to the Kennedy assassination. I, If, if I remember correctly, it was a whole thing, like, within the same time frame. Right. Because I was kind of laughing in my head i'm like i wonder how i can well no no because the party that they not the party i'm talking about there was the kennedy assassination that was like a weird catalyst thing Mm -hmm. that also happened around the same time frame as their father leaving slash getting killed right yeah and i i have a a a vague recollection of this because i wanted to roll in some sort of dana gould bit because he talks about the kennedy assassination and his stand-up and (laughs) what Oh, sorry. Okay, fine. Yeah. Um, um, he says he was born nine months and two days after the Kennedy assassination, which should tell you how my father processes grief. <laughs> and bit done. Uh, so, yeah, and the, but I mean this, and the the kind of like the once kitschiness and yet horror of that. Um, the costume. Uh, uh, well, yeah, of just like not the kitschiness. Not the kitschy is a really bad word. The sort of iconic kind of pop culture um, vision of Jackie oh. and Jackie then and just this imagery and, you know, like like We're talking about the, the Andy Chanel Warhol suit. and this, you know, it, like the Andy Warhol uh, uh, prints of her, the uh, kind of the... Um, you know, like, like, yeah, the Chanel suit, mm-hmm. the sort of the, like, it's just, it's kind of this iconic, mm-hmm. this kind of a sort of iconic pop culture thing that then almost gets, I think, especially because I was not born during the Kennedy assassination. Um, I was born way after and I not was way born, after. I was born during the year this movie takes place. Right. <laughs> um, and, uh. And I was born 10 years before that. So, like, to me, this whole, like, you know, it, it's sort of almost the repetitiveness of seeing those images robs them, of course, of their kind of power and gruesomeness because you just sort of see this, you know, the Jackie is this perfect sort of person. You sort of have the, like, uh, you know, uh, and and so and they kind of talk about this uh, like in the film because basically she uh, Jackie O shows up at at this goes to this party mm-hmm. and she decides to dress as Jackie O and instead of just like dressing as Jackie O she puts like ketchup mm-hmm. and um you know and even just like dried cereal to try to make make it. I thought it was like macaroni. Macaroni, you're right. <laughs> macaroni make it, make it seem like it was the the, the brains. brains. Yeah, she like explained. which actually in the 80s I remember like people doing for Halloween, which Seems is like weird. weird. But it's like what I, that's what I mean. Like it's almost like it's sort of it's like 
there's something really you know it's is it little like, literally watch somebody is it like die. how we have sexy darth vader costumes now? kind of yeah yes okay. it's exactly like that it's like the statute of limitations on grieving has passed let's do this right yeah and she actually like kind of mentions or, or um leslie actually like mentions this she basically is like hey you um you know look at like like, well, this is a real thing that happened. Like, it's not funny. When Leslie said that, I'm just like, oh, I'm the Leslie of the group. Yeah, totally. I mean, this is the thing. Now that I'm watching it, I'm sort of, yeah, it's like, I'm like, it is. It's sort of disturbing. On the other hand, you know, they're like, they're living next, uh, across the street from the Kennedys. Even worse. Yeah. And they're feeling like, yeah, exactly. It almost, it makes it even worse because it's not this distant thing mm -hmm. of the other. It's like. You know, here they are, and um, well, and they have no idea of, of their own privilege. You know, this is I think this is the and and that's I mean that's what this is really about. Right? Yeah, their disconnectedness with one, just people like regular people, because there's this moment where Leslie because okay, so they're in they're in they're Washington. in Massachusetts. They're they're in Massachusetts. Yeah, the oh. Kennedy compound. Oh, weird. Okay. Well, I thought she kept talking about Washington. Like, oh, you're right. You're right. They are. Sorry. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. She talks about. Yeah. Right. Yeah. She kept talking about Washington. Why didn't? But she because that's the. No. You're right. I'm okay. sorry. I'm thinking like the, the, the other summer. Yeah. The other Kennedy compound. But yes. Yeah. You're right. Okay. Because she keeps talking about. Um. She keeps talking about like. Uh. Yeah. Why didn't you go to my nation? The nation's capital. It's right. You know. Like why, not even for a, a field trip a field or anything trip. like that. And I'm just like, oh, the second she starts going down this rabbit hole, we're gonna find out that she couldn't afford to go. Right. I know. I know. The minute that yeah. Yeah. And then and what's even worse is that she digs deeper and deeper, just like, oh, come on, and you know, why well, couldn't you afford it? And well, and then she says, oh my God, you're from Pennsylvania. I know. Which is like, I mean, well, what does that even mean? Right. Like. People have, and and then she she asks about um, Leslie's. She's like, yeah, we just didn't have a like. She's very uncomfortable. She's like, you know, we were poor, and she's like, oh, did you eat a lot of? And I can't remember the example that she made, but it was yeah. something like, did you eat a lot of like hamburger helper or something like that? And she's like, which is not something that if you're poor, like it was one of those things where it's like, I can see where it's considered white trash, but it's if you're poor. Mm -hmm. And I don't remember the thing. I wish I could remember the actual food. Well, she responded like, with pancakes. But this is the thing. I'm like, in the minute it comes out of her mouth, you're like, well, obviously, if you're poor, you're not eating that because it's like a name brand thing. That requires meat. That requires, yeah, meat or just like, like it requires you purchasing it and costs, you know, costs actual money. Mm -hmm. Not a lot of money, but money. Whereas, like, of course, a poor person, like, if you're actually, like, grew up super close to the vest you're going to i mean sort of like sort of super close to the bone yeah like you're gonna eat pancakes you're not gonna eat like this you know marketed like thing what okay earlier i was going to make a comment about how this is a lot like arrested development where you're just watching rich disconnected people fumble yeah, around, I think that's what around, it's sort of supposed and, to be. And I watched it early 2000s, and mm -hmm. I really, really enjoyed it. Kind of fell off the map later on, and I bet you if mm -hmm. I were to rewatch it now, it wouldn't hit the same way because so mm -hmm. many things have Arrested changed. Arrested Development? Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I wonder, actually. It's so funny because when you said the whole Hamburger Helper thing and the fact that... I mean, Jack, not, I don't think it's Hamburger Helper, but... No, 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 no. no, no but well, I can't remember what it is, but it's something that, like... Well, no, what I was going to say is, like, just, like, Lucille Bluth. Right. How much could a banana cost you know possibly cost ten dollars right right like the disconnect of just that kind of thing so yeah, I'm just or like, like oh my god you this know is when the... politicians are like yeah like they can't answer how much like a, or a thing of milk is though to be honest like i'm trying to remember what an well, actual kind of gallon well, of milk is well, what no what one... size like a gallon right i think gallon. it's usually a gallon of milk okay. that they use but i'm like well first off i never buy a gallon of milk because i live with one other person <laughs> i don't really buy milk that much anyway and we talk because about... and then and that's when then that's when i realize i'm like Oh, you should run for office. I'm actually the problem. <laughs> you should run for office. Um, no, I'm I'm the problem. I'm like I'm kind of you know he's on my own way. Mm. So I don't. Yeah. So I just found it a little. It was a little harder to get into the haha -ha part of it. Um, for me this time, and also I just didn't like. I didn't. The thing between Leslie and Marty was not like. 
it wasn't what I remembered. It it had played such a smaller part mm-hmm. than I remember. But you remember it being pretty significant enough to yeah. bring it up. So my my question now for you is, since we have like no notion of her, her and him, we mm-hmm. just they've been engaged for six months together. For they've been six. together for six yeah. months. They're already engaged. Um, they met at a coffee shop, or well, no, donut shop, donut shop, yes, because she worked at the donut, right? Because she shop. smells like powdered sugar. Yeah, yeah. So, did you want to speculate? Yeah, go ahead. So, like, how basically, how did they meet? If we're talking, this about- is our first, like, this is like the fantasy. Uh, well, wrong word. Yeah, for this. Uh, it's movie, actually, but- yeah. <laughs> let's, let's. This is the this is the powdered sugar of us trying to <laughs> right put put a spin on this whole thing because mm-hmm. it happened pre our. Okay, so we have six months to work with. So right. like a real rom com. That's yeah. cool because the whole cool. movie takes place in twenty four thirty six hours, if that. Yeah, it was a hurricane. Right, like they get there. It's already a hurricane. It's dark. And, and then they spend the night, and the next thing happens the next day. Yep. I mean, something's happened, mm-hmm. something happens the Power next day. Up. Yep. Um, so, so what I actually... So we don't know what he does for a living. No. There, and maybe he does nothing. He made it through school. Right. Because there's a whole thing between him finishing versus Anthony right. dropping out. Exactly. Yep. Um. They and, do well for themselves on Sundays, so... Yeah, it's true. Mm-hmm. I mean, they're not doing anything extravagant. They're buying a paper. They're like... <sighs> it's pretty bourgeois. You know, in 1997, when we, we bought th- two papers, we bought the New York Times, and we bought uh, the Chronicle every Sunday. Mm-hmm. We'd sit. We sat in this place, this uh, kind of bar with big couches, and be the football on and we would drink coffee and then bloody marys and so you're describing your sunday then yes but but the the whole sort of the whole like two newspapers came to Mm. like five bucks yeah yeah or maybe maybe six or this is the sunday paper though but it was the sun but it was like both of them the chronicle Mm. and the new york times sunday which it costs me so much more to buy the new york times sunday now oh yeah but um, so so when did he fall in love with her? So I think that they meet. So I think that basically he moves in to he finds this apartment in New York. He goes off to New York after this really like kind of dramatic thing where he's like was shot. You know, what? Or when he was shot? When? Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> when he gets shot by his sister um and he and then uh and basically he's like okay what do normal um and i think actually at first he's like what do normal people do who don't eat themselves alive because they have too many you know they've never been said no to and he's like they eat donuts and so he finds a donut shop yep and Part of his day now is that every morning he goes, he's trying to establish a routine to Mm -hmm. keep from going crazy. And one of the things is that he goes to this donut shop every day, which is where she works. And and it's the first kind of ray of sunshine and... uh, yeah, she doesn't charm and sort of jokes and sweetness that he sees in New York City. I mean, he's living in New York City. He probably is like a you know, maybe he's using his dad's connections, so he's dealing with people who've known him his whole life who are still in that that mode. Mm. Um and here's somebody who actually is completely different from that whole world and is outgoing and friendly and for her you know I mean she I think she, I might get the feeling that she falls in love with him at first sight mm. um like he walks into the coffee shop they smile I think for him it's like she's kind of an you know they start talking every day 
he tries to make her laugh and it works and he's like and I think so I think he falls in love with her very quickly I just don't think it's on first Mm. sight I think he's probably like he sees her she's very like in this movie she's very bubbly she is there's nothing uh sour about her at no all. it's Nothing. pure sweetness like to the point where kind of rewatching it felt I mean you know and I think this is part of the kind of ridiculousness is that she is so like well she's incredibly guileless. naive too yeah yeah but then she when she get, there's this like sharp edge when she realizes that she has to deal with her you know sister and suddenly you see her when she or deal with his sister and mm-hmm. she's like oh I don't think you're insane mm. I think no one's ever told you no. And the way she says it is like suddenly you're like, oh, this girl's like a survivor. Hmm. You know, it's not like maybe she's she's not naive. She's kind of trying to naive stay positive. Yeah, not, no, not, but she does. She's, she's well. No, I don't. I don't know. I don't know if I agree because I feel like she. It, like she is she She's comes not, off as maybe unsophisticated I don't even know if I would use that either I mean she's she's naive to like upper crust of society yeah which is it, not a problem no and unless also, she's in it right and like I mean it is intimidating I mean you walk into a house like that I've, I've visited friends where you're like oh it's like a normal you know and then you walk into their house and it's, it's like freaking high school all over again right totally Claws are out Right, exactly. You're and not you good enough. you think you've, like, made this world. And it's, like, and also I think around this time, you know, it's at that point where I think, you know, my, I was trying to, like, just, dis- you know, uh, there's there's that thing of, like, when you feel like an adult and then you go home, because you, you live close to your parents. Mm-hmm. But I live on the other side of the country with my mm-hmm. parents. So when I go to see them, it's not for, like, an afternoon. It's, like, for days. Yep. And it's always, like, oh my God, I'm an eight-year-old. Like, I'm a 27-year-old woman. Like, I have a life, you know, or rather, I have, like, a job. I have a boyfriend. I have, like, I'm very different from my parents. I have a, you know, so you think, I, you, I think I have a different life than my parents, but actually, I have exactly the life that my parents, like, had when I was a kid. <laughs> like, I am a person living in a city. I go to, like, I go to do the, a lot of the same things my parents like to do. Like, I like to go to the museum. Mm-hmm. I like to, like, go for hikes in the country. That I happens. like to. So it's like, but I you have this perception, and then there you are. Um, but then you go home, and you're like, oh, my God, I am still, ex- I'm like an eight-year-old. I haven't actually escaped the psych you know the no, that psychosis of you know my my home life um not my the psycho but the sort of that weird thing so that's why i think that's where i think how about you well when do you think they've met uh when do i think they met six months prior to the no movie. i mean <laughs> no i mean like <laughs> how how do you envision them like falling in love uh so i'm not really sure if that's there i think he was clinging to her for dear life because oh my god you are an example of what is exactly wrong with my family so Mm -hmm. i'm going to so he comes into the shop and i'm sure that there was more than one interaction and i'm allowing myself to think that because she tried to work really hard to get out of the poverty that she was in that she Mm -hmm. alluded to she works long hours in the shop and she probably has to deal with a lot of bullshit yes and so that's where her hardness comes in afterwards because She's up front. She has to be kind. And you see her kindness when she has to deal with the awkwardness of dealing with Anthony. Mm -hmm. So you know that she just kind of smiles and grins and bears it. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, when it really comes down to it, she knows how to protect herself Mm -hmm. when it comes to, like, Jackie O doing what she's doing. Right. So she probably considers Anthony to be not a big threat. No. So that's why it's very, very easy to go, like, oh, come on. And whereas with Jackie, I think she also like, feels kind of sorry for Anthony. Well, I think we all like. felt sorry. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> we really do. Yeah. Um. So I think what happened is, is that he probably tried to talk to her in like a regular way that he's used to, and I'm willing to wager just went over her head, and she's just like, "What do you mean?" And he was enthralled by that. Well, yeah. I mean, you got to remember, like, it's almost like, yeah, he's, he's like everyone's living in this petri dish, mm. right? They have their own way of talking. They are vile. They're vile. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um. 
So you, th- so you, so you think they met in the coffee shop? I think so, um, or the donut shop. Um, and you, so do what do you think for her? Do you think she? I think that she enjoyed him coming out of his not so hard shell mm-hmm. because he was the one who was trying to escape from the evil. Mm-hmm. And he, he's also pretty compassionate too, knowing full well that he couldn't come back home because that's what was destroying his sister. He even admitted as such. Yeah, that's what he was saying. Yeah, yeah. So, but he also like, again, I think he clung to her and I think she was very happy to find somebody who was just happy to be with her rather than just being kind of, you know, customer service asshole or just mm-hmm. seeing like the exterior. Right. Or just like coming on. Yeah. I mm-hmm. bet he wasn't like creepy or. I'm sure. Do you think it's, oh, do you think he is out of there only because his sister, like he thinks it, it ruins his sister? Do you think he, hmm. I mean, do you think he left only because it ruined his sister? I he said that's why he knew he couldn't come back. Right, but I mean, do you and, think and there's the only some reason- relief? Like he doesn't even want to go in the house. In the more in the beginning, I think it's like some sort of addiction. Like he doesn't even talk to them. Yeah. Well, yeah, because he knows if he goes into that house, he's not sure he's strong enough to. But at the same time, he be he went back because she wanted to meet them. Right. Yeah. Which is like kind of I think in a weird way the ultimate, like either delusion or sacrifice i don't know oh i don't mm. i mean not ultimate but i think it's like she's he's like yeah it's like that thing of like we're normal now i'm normal now. i'm normal now. Handle they're not normal i'm normal. no i mean like we're they're like the couple no that's that's what right. i think it is yeah but, um, um yeah so i don't so all we could so do you is think speculate. it's less than that like you think it's less i i, I think it's powerful just, like, um, you'd think they're not. No. I don't know. That makes sense. Not all. First of all, he runs back to his sister. No problem. So fast. Like, so fast. within a couple hours. And then she goes off and, like. she. Look, okay, I totally forgot about Anthony. So yeah. she ends up, like, having sex with Anthony, yep. which she regrets, like, hugely. Well, I don't. She, she was confused, but at the same time, like. She's like, I hope you know this isn't going to go anywhere. That, this is why I don't think she's naive at all. Yeah, yeah. That's, I think you're right. I think that's a good point. Yeah, so. Maybe, yeah. That's, also, be she was issue. really distraught because she was actually saying that she's just like, I, I thought you would be like Marty. I know. That was a very upsetting. Also gross. Also gross. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so. Um, and like, obviously, we c- so. Do we know what happens? Okay. So there is a potential for. Okay, so at the end of the movie, for those of you who haven't seen it, uh, but at the same time, um, the movie ends with, so the, so the twins like to reenact the, the Kennedy assassination. And at the end, there's this whole, he's leaving, she's leaving. Oh my God, it's like, get out. Where are the keys? I don't have the keys. We it took actually your keys. is kind of like, I mean, I was thinking that it actually so is weird. a lot like Get Out. Well, just in the whole, but like not as good, you know. Like obviously, get. I mean, Get Out is one of my favorite movies. Like, well, the point is, is that there was a problem with the keys and they couldn't leave. Right, right. Um, and so it gets Uh, to the point because Jackie O flushes them, steals them, and then flushes them down the toilet. So in the end, um, she says, "Just let let us reenact this one more time." Because what happens is, is that they'll shoot with blanks, and he will fall down, and then she will, you know oh my god my husband and you yeah know, do tries the to, whole like yeah the yeah. whole thing that jackie was doing and and the, the couple of things that i read um were saying that, yeah that was their foreplay and i'm like yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Pretty, yeah. pretty pretty, pretty upset. because the first time they like had sex was ostensibly after this uh, party this party yeah. where they you know she dressed up like that for the first time um i don't even want to think about it so the whole idea is is that they reenact but she says you can go if we do this one last time um but this time she okay this time it's implied because there were blanks before there is this implied she shoots him for real Mm -hmm. now you and i were talking a little bit before the podcast she was saying you were saying oh we can't do the whole what happens next i'm like well if you really think about it you hear the gunshot you see Leslie run out crying. 
and you hear a voiceover saying, well, we buried him in the backyard, just like dad. Mm -hmm. Now, there's a disagreement between whether or not their father left or their father was killed and Mm. is buried in the backyard. I could say that there's equally a disagreement between whether or not she actually shot him. Or, and and Leslie freaked out and left just by hearing the gunshot. You know that's really interesting because I was trying to figure when you said that I was like, yeah, I was like, I did not occur to me. She also didn't close the door on the way out. Doors. I know because doors, doors. I mean that could be a play thing, but actually when I was first thinking and it was, I was like, I was like, that's never occurred to me. Mm. And then I'm like, well, I was thinking about it and I realized I was like. Why didn't occur? And I was like, oh, it's a perfect play ending because you don't have to deal with. No, it's the like from just the logistics of theater. Okay. It's the perfect way to end because you don't have to deal with. uh, uh, You don't have to deal with like getting a new shirt every single day. Um, you don't have to deal with like fake blood, you know, like the mechanics of fake blood. You don't have to get a fight coach. So if this is on Broadway uh, or like Lord C theaters, you don't have to get a fight coach. I think, well, I guess they don't technically fight. So you may not have to get a fight coach no, because of equity. Waiting. But, you know, often like uh, you have to do some sort of stunt thing. We're getting just into according a deep to dive union of theater. Yeah. Um, there's just lots of reasons why that isn't a good way to end. That's a very theatrical way to end. It's much more effective also in a theater mm-hmm. to have that, to have it just be noise and then everything go black. Mm. Like, and I was like, I realized like, oh, that's why I just assumed. And I don't remember what happens in the play any more really than, you know, it's been a 20, over 20 years since I read it. She puts some macaroni on her dress. She puts some macaroni on her dress. But like, um, I, so I don't know. I, I'm, I guess I am, I still believe that she killed him. Oh, I see. No, I do too. I just, um, I'm just saying it's like yeah. very ambiguous. No, no, but that's interesting because to me, I was like not ambiguous at all. Mm. And I was trying to narrator. figure out why. But when you said I'm reliable narrator, I'm like, oh, yeah, that I like it. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Anyway. Um, like I said, I could find no articles to help me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And like, I don't know. I read a couple of reviews and it didn't. I guess I just always assumed. I was like, oh, that makes sense that well, they would course. end it that it, way. It, it makes, but it stands I, to reason that that is the assumption. Right. But it's like, I thought when you said that, I was like, that is fascinating. Like, why do I assume that? Because you're, 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 that's a plot. I felt like that was extremely plausible. And I was trying to figure out why my first instinct was like, that's not plausible. And I realized, oh, it's just pure theater logistics. <laughs> why I think it's not plausible, which and, is a ridiculous reason. And you know what else could come into light as well is that they could be doing the same thing. And remember, that's their foreplay. So it's very possible that they, thir- they heard that. It just started right back up for him all over again. And Leslie runs crying again because they're yeah. having sex again. Right. Yeah. I mean, I probably would. I'd run screaming. Um, Okay. So what you were so, you bring that up, Mm -hmm. but do you feel like, like, should we, if, if, if that, if they didn't, if, if like that, what you just said is true, if like she just shot him with blanks, Mm. what do you think would happen to this couple? This to Leslie and Marty? No, I'm just saying it's plausible, but I'm, I'm, I'm I'm saying he's dead. (laughs) Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so what what do you think happens to her after this? Leslie? Leslie. You know, what's kind of weird is that because they're rich, I was just thinking, shit, she has no recourse because the family's going to defend Jackie O to the end because that's just the way it is. She doesn't, mm-hmm. she doesn't get a no. The mother's going to be like, I have no idea what you're talking about. Who is this person at my doorstep? Um, the police are not going to come in. In fact, I don't even think she's even going to bother trying because she's so traumatized. She's just going to go back to New York and, and sob. And then she has to get a new place to live because she lost her purse. <laughs> so I think that... I actually... I think that they will contact her and give her money. You think so? Because, yes, it could be like our word against theirs, but they don't even want to deal. 
they'll have to get a lawyer anyway. And why not? Why not? Like, it's if the story is to be believed that the father is buried in the backyard. Right. There's nothing stopping them from doing it again. Well, I mean, but like the thing is, she may be nothing, but I don't think it's worth it for them to find out. I think it's much easier. I think the mother is just basically going to be like, we're giving you half a million. And you can never mention this again. I don't think she would even deem to think that. I, I don't think she would put in the effort to claim that that girl could do anything to their family. Oh, I completely disagree. Really? Well, I mean, think about it. Like, I mean, well, they live across the street from the Kennedys. Like, they've been quite, you know, they. this is how rich people deal with these things. I mean, it, that's my understanding. I mean, you can pay people off. I mean, of course, you well, can, we know, you know, of course we you know can that pay people, people are like, it's like, it's just easier. And then it's, there's no like conscience. She, uh, because, you know, people are going to be like, where's Marty? I don't know. We haven't seen him. Um, Last yeah. I heard he was still in New York. No, but they're going to ask her. They're going to ask Leslie. Mm-hmm. I, even if she, I, I, I think we will disagree in this manner mm -hmm. that I think that the hubris of that mother will make it so they would not try to pay her off and they would just deny. But the didn't, I mean, the thing is they'd have to investigate. Are you sure? Mm -hmm. I still think that because if the father is buried in the backyard, which I believe he is, even though I like to say like, was he? Um, I kind of don't know. I'm actually. Do you think he's I out go there back somewhere? and forth, and he's just out there somewhere. Do you think he's paying off his but own wife? But it does feel weird. Do you think he's paying off his own wife to say, "I'm leaving. You have this forever. Never come for me." Right, and I think she has her own money. I think she has her. They have their own like society, to where he would have to reappear in some way, shape, or form. I think he. I don't know. I'm really. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I go back and forth. Um. But, yeah, I know. I'm convinced that they paid him off. Because okay. I just feel like there's. it's just too weird to have, like, this. It's just too weird to have this person who has seen all these things. And if they are, a, if they, it, you know, I'm sure everyone already thinks that the family is weird. In mm -hmm. the, in the, I mean, you got to remember, in the town, they're not, in that town, they're not the richest people in that town. You they talk about how they don't have any servants. Well, yeah, because the maid quit. Cause, right, because it's too fucked up. Well, yeah, because she quit after the, yeah. Jackie shot her brother. Right. Um. So I think, like, it's, I think that they, you know, having people poking around asking questions doesn't get her anywhere. I don't think. Right. But. And I think she's used to just dispensing with people with money. Mm. But if they probably don't know well you think they have enough money to dispense half a million in 83 though that's a okay i don't know how much money you're right i that was just yeah half a million now but i mean she pro probably probably not not enough probably she can, she can probably almost not get a condo in the suburbs here yeah <laughs> almost <laughs> almost <laughs> uh yes a million dollar one bedroom apartment i said you said half a million so <laughs> almost. half a million it's you can't even yeah can't even hear okay I said suburbs. So, um, all right. R.I.P. Marty. Um, uh, okay. So, yeah. Anyway, that's House of Yes. Wouldn't say it's romantic. Uh, it had elements of what you wanted in your romantic future. Mm -hmm. So I say that it hits the, the box of what yeah. I look for in a podcast conversation and, and what we've established. We and I do sit like, uh, you know, there's... Yeah. Anyway, the important part is we were not referring to Marty and Jackie. <laughs> no, God, no. I was actually going to clarify that. Like, we're not going to talk about Marty and Jackie. Okay, so well, you're not. So, um, I, I need to. I just need to shake that off. <laughs> Why, Polina? <laughs> Why would you say that? I don't know. So, would you say that it's important for you to maybe check out our sponsors? Uh, particular scent serenity now 
Yes, I think that would really help me. I mentioned that because Frankie and Murr, mm-hmm. wonderful sponsor of our Amazing podcast. Amazing sponsor, yes. Um, I had a birthday recently, and yeah. my super fan of a brother um, who um, I'm very sad that I'm bringing him up with this episode but mm-hmm. yeah <laughs> oh god yes I didn't even make that connection damn it so you actually have siblings I have no siblings right so right. I'm like so it's pr- even weirder so you're me. intrigued with these whole you know uh movies like the house of yes with like oh sibling dynamics okay I yeah no <laughs> I think also maybe it's less strange you know it's like I'm like well that can't happen anyway because I don't have anyone to put in that place I don't not like my brother uh Okay. I have no brothers. Okay. Yeah. So what I'm going to say is mm-hmm. that uh, my brother so Patrick your wonderful was, brother. was kind enough to um, get me some Frankie and Murr. He, he picked up some Serenity Now and some Purple People Pleaser oh. for my birthday. How's Purple People Pleaser? It's it's lavender. And you know how I feel about that. Mm-hmm. So wonderful. Oh, nice. Relaxing. For me, I mean, because yeah. I am a, I am a scent wuss. And it's just like, no, hey. I say wuss. I think, I think it, aff- I mean. I'm easily affected by it. I think that's nice. Oh, okay. Why Why would that be a negative? Oh, I didn't say it was a negative. I'm just saying I'm very easily yeah. affected by it. Well, it's also really good quality stuff, so mm-hmm. it makes sense. Yeah, Serenity Now. And so, Yeah, what's Serenity Now like? It's, um, well, first of all, it has an exclamation point in it, so it's yeah. awesome. <laughs> um, it, it's woodsy, Ooh. so it, it's trying to put you in like a serene forest type scenario oh that's nice now now yeah so it's pretty good <laughs> does it and, and it works because yeah. it, <laughs> you were saying you're really need, affected by it. yeah I, I needed it after this movie yeah. um so no it was fantastic um and if you want to support our show you can go to frankie and you can use our promo code happily one mm-hmm. h h a p p i l y and the number one mm-hmm. and you will get 20 percent off and Mm-hmm. You also get uh, free shipping for orders over $35, and that's domestic shipping. So thank you very much mm-hmm. for that. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of relaxing just thinking about it. Cause I kind of want some right now. Well, I don't have it with me. Damn. Which is code for, it's mine. I know. Because <laughs> I have been known to make off with your, <laughs> oh, let me try this. No. Oh, <laughs> let me. I mean, sure. Um. Yep. Yeah. So. Awesome. Okay. So, um, House of Yes, um, that was interesting. And if you have thoughts about that movie, oh please, please share. We want to hear about that. You can find us on Twitter at Hemecast. Mm-hmm. H e a m c a s t. We're also on Instagram at Hemecast as well. It's true. Yep. Um, we're on Facebook at Happily Ever Aftermath. Uh, you can email us at contact at Hemecast dot com. Uh, we are very happy to be part of the incredible Lady Pod Squad. Yes, they are incredible. You can check out other lady led podcasts by going on to any social media and search the hashtag Lady Pod Squad. You will find lots of things on anything you may be interested in. Mm-hmm. Like, I have no joke for that. Whoops. I know, me too. <laughs> <laughs> this movie took it nerdy out of me. bitches. <laughs> oh, that, that's it's part of the Lady Pod Squad. Yes. <laughs> so if you sh- need yourself some nerdy bitches, and you do. <laughs> just gonna say (laughs) just putting it out there totally awesome okay um okay great well uh see you next time all right take care bye enjoy bye next time we'll do 1988's cinema paradiso enjoy